What's up everybody? Welcome to day number eight in building a techno set from scratch. My name is Tom Cosm and today we finally get to focus on sound design. I know it's been a long process to get there working on the shell but I the last stream I got it completely how I think I want so we can just focus on making some fat techno sounds today. That is the plan. I'll do a little bit of a recap because this is it's not really a halfway point, it's more of a 75% of the way point through. Um, what's up everyone in chat? Neandra, Rebellion, Gabrielle, Jimbo, Zach, all you guys, Twitch, Facebook, and uh, what's the other one? YouTube. I'm watching all ears, and you're watching me. It's kind of scary. That's cool. So a quick recap. Um, what we did yesterday is uh, we fixed up the automated machine, which is over here. So now this all updates everything perfectly with the actual macro that it's changing as we move through the base and the snare and whatnot. You'll see that it updates the name of that parameter, which is going to be a lot handier for me in a live situation to know which of these 64 do what. We also have a clear all button, which is really good. So by hitting that, it clears all of the automators and it also... Um, sets a default value which is really handy because it wasn't setting default values before and all these macro knobs were kind of stuck somewhere really 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 strange which is quite difficult what's up Malika so that we got that sorted um, we then added some extra dummy clips so these are all two bar dummy clips and we mapped them to this row and this row on this launch control XL so if I want to quickly trigger a fill I can do it on this one here and if I want to quickly trigger a two bar fill I can do it here on the kick track or the bass track or all of the tracks so that's really good that's a quick little fills um, I also tidied up the area where the synthesizers are so in the kick track we're with eight individual operators per excuse me clip slot we just have an operator and an EQ8, which is turned off for now. We may add a few more things in there depending on the type of kick that we want. We've got a bass track. This is more of an audio instrument rack because this is going to be melodic. The snare, the hat one and hat two are in drum racks as well. The percussion is in a uh, audio instrument rack. So is the synth one and the synth two. And I also tidied up the scenes. So down here we've got track one. I have eight of these here. So this is where all our MIDI clips are going to go. And then we've got track two and track three and track four and so on. Um, I highly encourage people who are watching live in this episode to be as interactive as you can. Um, drum synthesis isn't one of my top areas. I'm going to do my best. But if you've got any tips or anything you think would sound cool, let me know. Um, we're also going to make some drones over here. So you'll see we've got morph one, two, three up to eight these are all operators at the moment and each track is going to have its own morphing it's going to be a drone or it's going to be a chord or it's going to be like a melodic thing something i can play on the push and we're going to be using my brainwave modulations to modulate the parameters of those um i'm not sure if i'm going to upgrade these to a different plugin yet i may be using a sugar bytes plugin i may use an external vst depending on cpu and things like that and if we can, we'll see what we can get out of the actual operators themselves. Um, to give you an overview of the sound design, here's a quick spreadsheet that I have mocked up. Um, it's not completely full, it's just a general mock because I know as soon as we start we're going to get completely off track. But um, there's going to be 8 tracks in total. The way it's going to work is today's stream I hope to nail uh, 2 tracks. And then I'm going to have a break, uh, a few hours break where I'll probably have a nap. And then I'm going to stream again and do track 3 and 4. Then tomorrow we'll do track five and six, and then the, and then later in the evening we'll do track seven and eight. And the kind of general flow of how I want this to go is, I want the first track to be very kind of squelchy. It's going to have a big intro, and I want the kick drum to be massive. I want it to have a sub in it. I want it to kind of be the bass as well. So that's kind of there's going to be like a one and two minute build up in the intro, and then all of a sudden this techno kick comes out of nowhere, and it's going to be huge. Um, the bass, you can see I've got an occasional just go dunk, 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 something like that. Uh, 
yeah, and then just like the snares and the hats, I put in some rough points on how I want them. We're going to have like a, a poly loop going on the synth one, but it's not going to be digga 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 like 16th notes. It's just going to be bum 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 bum. Um, the synths, I just want a single kind of nice dark chord stab every now and then. Um, I'm going to make that a really long loop, I think, so I can have a little bit of variation at the end of maybe an 8 bar or 16 bar phrase. And the drone is going to be low and prominent. Um, and you can see here, this one is going to be a more chordy one. So it's going to go squelchy, then into a, like a chordy kind of uh, techno track. This one's going to have a bit of pads to it. This one's going to be call and response, so that means um, synth 1 talks to synth 2 and vice versa, so they kind of like have this little conversation throughout the track. Track 5 is going to start really dark, like it's going into a very dark kind of area, but it's going to have a really crazy funky drop in the middle, uh, which is um, going to come out of nowhere, which I want. Track 6, I was thinking of a more of an acidy type track, so lots of resonance, lots of filter playing with. Track 7... Um, is kind of building up to track eight because as you can see track eight has huge all the things ends on an explosion i want this to be the heaviest fucking techno thing i've ever written in my life and i thought i might as well make track seven almost lead up to that so this is going to have kind of alarm sounds lfo modulating pitch kind of urgent urgency kind of you know whoop, 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 that kind of shit and up and down and all that kind of thing so that's the general flow of how i want the set to go as i said as we get into the, des the design it may change uh completely who knows but i wrote this out just for me just to give me a little bit of an idea and again as i said if you've got any suggestions whatsoever definitely give me some advice on this one or if you think something sucks just say it sucks don't be polite just say hey i think that sucks if you can say why it sucks that would help but even if it just sucks let me know What's up, Santo on Facebook? Tom Cousin, when are you coming to South America? Ooh, no time soon that I have planned. What's up, Rebellion from France? See you guys having your little French conversation over on YouTube there. Very cool. You're keen to hear the last tune? There is no last tune. That's the thing. Everything we've been working on is a big, giant, blank canvas. It's a big shell to create tunes. This is where the tunes start. So uh, we don't have any audio generated whatsoever that's what we're going to be doing today and i guess we might as well get started so i'm going to stop this recess track here uh this is just an ambient track that i've made we'll keep it on there because i might use it for the intro of my next shows so let's go down here to track one which is here we'll give it a color for a start because i like coloring things uh we'll give it this shitty color here and let's start with a kick We'll make a very basic kick so add in a midi clip we're going to be using kick one because it's the first kick of the track and i'm just going to go dunk 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 like so that's in a drum rack here and that's going to be triggering this kick one which is simply just an operator on its default settings with a sine wave so we're just going to get a sine wave not very very great for now let's play it okay pretty boring so far let me turn it up a bit for you guys Hopefully that's a good adjustment of volume level. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to... Do I want it in fixed mode or not? If I put it in fixed mode, I can choose the frequency here. Oh, I'm on the wrong operator. What I might do is not keep it in fixed mode because I'm going to be using a bit of FM synthesis. So I'll use the transpose instead. Let's find a nice low note. So I'm using the transpose to bring it down. And I want it to be really subby, so. And we will give it a pitch envelope, so this is the lowest that it will be. Let's use the up arrows. That sounds good. Okay, let's go into the envelope, and what we'll do is we'll turn it into a trigger mode. And we'll bring the decay and the, sorry, the sustain down and the decay out a bit. Get it kind of covering a bar. We should pick a BPM. I'm going to be working 130, I think. That's a pretty good, fast, energetic kind of BPM. So that's very good. Uh, what we can do is change the phasing on the sine wave a little bit. So uh, instead of the sine wave starting at the very zero crossing, um, it's going to start outside of the zero crossing, which creates a bit of a click at the start which is always a little bit of a 
a help for kick drum and let's give it a pitch envelope so i'm going to turn that on um we'll keep the default settings for now let's just bring it up a little bit and we'll bring the peak up and bring the decay back a bit very good i'm going to go and use this algorithm here which gives us two fm synthesizers that means i'm going to turn oscillator b on and i'm going to put oscillator b in fixed mode actually and let's bring the level up you think the sound is low compared to my voice okay let's turn it up a little bit more how's that for you guys how's that test one two three four five I'll wait until I hear your comments. So this is frequency modulating with a fixed frequency, which is inharmonic to the original. So let's go and we'll make this trigger mode as well. And we'll make sure that this has low sustain and a short decay as well. Let's bring the frequency up quite high. Bring the decay down. Frequency's too high. Bit less level i ended up getting a dell xps laptop the highest spec one that i could get okay that's sounding pretty good maybe if we give it a bit more pitch envelope that's sounding a bit more fat maybe if we give it a bit more peak whoops A little less decay. That's sounding pretty good so far. I am going to turn on the C oscillator here. I'm going to go. Where should we do? We'll um, copy this to C. So we've got. Oh, wrong thing. Okay, I need to right click here and copy from oscillator A. So we've got the same one. So it's just doubled in the amplitude here. But what I might do is slightly fine tune the pitch of this one, just so that, you know, we've got like membranes in a kick drum. So they're a little bit dissonance. And we've got that really low kind of sub kind of phase canceling happening, which is good. What if we do this even more? That's pretty cool. And of course, we can change the phasing on this one too. We'll keep it as a click. And this one is also frequency modulating this one. So let's turn that on as well. Change it to fixed. Bring the level up for that one as well. And give that an envelope down. That sounds like a pretty good kick. Christopher says, I'm scared to go buy a laptop because every other computer I use, the sound interface doesn't get along with the USB. Something about USB 3 or new, U, new USB chipsets. They all decide to make static or squelchy noises at random. Yeah, I haven't come across that yet. I'm running a Tractor Audio 10. Don't ask me why because I only have one output. Um, I'm also running on my master computer, which my uh, voice and this computer's output is going into is a Yamaha a G06. But yeah, I haven't come across any issues so far. Okay, that's sounding pretty cool. Um, we could play with the resonance a little bit. Let's see rid of some of the frequencies, maybe. No, we'll keep that up. That's pretty cool. Uh, we need to make sure. I'm going to set all of these to trigger. It's not going to make too much of a difference, but. I think that's pretty cool actually already. Um, what I might do is change the filter to an SMP. I will bring it down a little bit, but I'll give it an envelope. And that means we can give it some drive. We don't want to, we don't want to peak it. And um, we've got an EQ8 here. Let's just close down the operator. I am going to use it for this one. Um, let's just bring up the Bring it up quite a lot here. That 
That's not bad. Let me just uh, go back to the operator here. Let's change the uh, fine tuning of the second oscillator. Too much. I think that sounds pretty good. Maybe a little bit less level on here and here. Go back to the EQ. Remember for this particular track I want the bass line to not really be a bass line. I'll probably even low cut, uh, sorry, high pass filter the bass just so, so we get a bit of a donk going on. Try a bit more sustain on OSD, you reckon? Okay, we can do that. A bit more sustain. Gives it a bit, it's a bit dirty. Let's play with the time, which adjusts all the envelopes. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Now we get a nice snappy kick. But I want this one to be heavy as. Now I'm going to just adjust the frequency a little bit more. Fine tune, maybe. It's almost a triplet feeling now. If you're listening in subs or with headphones, you could probably hear. This going crazy. I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's roll with that for now. So with the bass track, I'm gonna add it a MIDI clip. I'm gonna make it, uh, we'll make it 16 bars long. I know it's quite long. And let's hit play on it. We'll make it two bars long for now. And then we can extend it out if needed. So let's zoom back in here and have a look. Let's pick a nice low note. We're in a sine wave. I'm just going to change it to a uh, saw wave for now. You'll see how we have a chain selector so we can choose which of the bases we want. We want it on number one, which is this one here. I'll hide the chain selector and I am, I'm just going to make this a square wave D for now, square wave digital for now. And we'll just find a, a low note. Let's try this. So this is just a rhythmical pattern for now. Again, I will be adjusting the uh, sound dramatically. Fucking Windows key. Uh, Fixie Delic over on YouTube, what's up? The last three streams really were just still fine tuning the, sh the shell. Uh, we just fixed up some minor problems. We made things really tidy. It was all kind of housekeeping type stuff. So uh, this is where all the sound design stuff comes in. Christopher on Facebook says, while you're creating the kick drum, can you show an example of how, how you, you would use compression to shape the sound? No, I hardly ever use compression ever. Um, I just use an operator and an EQ. My goal is to not use any compression in this whatsoever, apart from the side chaining. Um, I'm not very good at compression and I just don't think it's needed if you, well, I mean, yeah, it can make it sound fatter, but it's just not how I roll, so it's not really how I do it. Any specific key signature you use to tune your kick? Nope, just what sound good in my ears. That's what we're doing today. I'm not going to stick to any formulas or patterns. I'm just going to use my ears and keep building until I get something that sounds good. That's how we're going to do it. I do usually roll with the G to start off with just because I, I like that note. Let's bring it up an octave, control A, shift up. 
That's all good. So let's, we've only got one oscillator at the moment. Let's bring the filter down, change it to a SMP. I'm bringing the filter right down so I can give it some envelope. Let's bring the envelope down a bit. Whoops. And remember all the effects are happening over on the fills channels and over on the automator channels here so I'm just going to try and purely use synthesis and EQs on these tracks here if I can. The, Christopher says the reason I ask is I read you can use it to make the clicky part stand out more or less but I've never had success with it. Uh, well I mean if we have a look over on the spectrum here if I turn the EQ8 off well I can't really do that. I mean, the click is happening around here. If you were to use uh, multi-band compression, you could compress uh, or expand the high end and bring the click up a bit more if you wanted to. But you can just do it with a limiter. Like if I was to select, select, add another pole in here, like five, and bring that up massively, bring our cue down. Okay, back to the bass. This is the kind of the sound I want. I want it to kind of... Uh, I'm going to give it a bit more decay on the filter. Maybe change the slope a little bit. Let's make it into a full subtractive mode and we'll give it two squares and detune them slightly. And as I said, we will turn on the EQ for this one as well. And I'm going to turn the low pole into a staunch cutoff. So we can get rid of that first fundamental here. That detuning is too much. Let's give it some resonance. And what I might do is change pole 4 to a shelf like this. Okay, let's turn the LFO on. We'll turn it off destination ABCD and we'll add it to the filter. Uh, I'm going to turn re-trigger off and we'll have it at a very low speed. So that's just going to slowly move the filter up and down. A little bit of modulation. What if we put this on octave down now? Uh, I'm using my modifier keys on my new PC. Very good. Let's make this one high. Da 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 dum. And that, of course, will sound good when we use the automated machine on it. Let's just have a look here again. What I might do is I might add a tiny little bit of white noise. Um, I'll use white noise looped so we can put it in a fixed frequency because that can sometimes give interesting results. it down quite low. Levels too high. Do I match the bass frequency in EQ8 with the G note bass? Ah uh, well I mean what I've done here is I can see the fundamental which is around here so I'm kind of cutting it off because that kick is really taking over everything. If I was to bring it down 
But it's also going to be side chaining because what we did do is feed everything but the kick through this side chain here. So if I bring it right down. Okay, back to the noise. We could even give it a very slight pitch envelope, very short decay, and bring the peak up. Too much peak. Okay, so I'm happy with that for the two bars. What I'm going to do is extend this out to 16 bars long, like so. Uh, actually, okay, cancel that. No, I'm going to go back to two bars for a second. Let's zoom back in here. What I'm going to do is instead of use the LFO to control the filter cutoff, I'm going to bring it right down. I'm going to go into my global area and I'm going to change the velocity to the filter envelope amount and give it a amount of 100. So that means within the clip itself. We can change the velocity of these notes here to interesting different things. Let me just bring that EQ back up again. Yeah, I'm using a PC now. My MacBook died two days ago in the middle of doing this whole thing. So I went out and bought a new PC. I wanted it for the touch screen so I could use the automator thing here because I can go ahead and touch points, which is pretty cool. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, remember, this is all going to be nice and raw sounding stuff until we get into the automated machine. That's where the effects and the magic will happen. So I am going to make this 16 bars long. And let's change the grid size very small to 1. So I can duplicate basically this across um, 8 times. I think there's a car crash outside. What's up, David? What's up, Smoker? I'm going to be working on this every day, every waking hour until Saturday, bro, for sure. I didn't get a Razer. They're a bit too pricey for me. I got a uh, Dell XP, yes, something, something. It's pretty high spec. It was about the same price as a new MacBook Pro, but it came comes with, like, heaps more grunt, in my opinion. And I have a desktop, which I use in my everyday life anyway, so it's not much of a difference moving to Windows. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of iterations of this. I can change these around a little bit. So I'm going to bring my grid size smaller again, down to the 16th note level. So this one I'm going to bring back here and make it a nice long note, if it'll do that, with the envelope. Yeah, let's do that. So put a little phrasing shift there. All sixteenth notes uh, will go up like this. Get rid of that one. And I'm gonna select. Let me just make this a bit bigger. Select all these notes and make them short. And what I'll do is I'll make every second one, I'll just mess with the velocities because remember this is the attack, uh, sorry, the filter automation amount. We 
definitely should put another big nice long note there what if we go all the way down to a G that's pretty evil like a G negative one I don't know if that's going to be good or not it's definitely not going to be ha that harmonic but we'll see how it sounds What's up, David, on Facebook? That's cool. I'm just going to do a little pattern change here. I might just, just move this note to the right, maybe. Let's zoom out a little bit, and we'll play from this point here. I might just loop that eight bars for now. That sounds good to me. Um, if we need a variation, we can create another bass clip here. I'm just using headphones at the moment so I can really have it quite loud without the monitors feeding back into my headphones, but I do have monitors here. And of course we can do little fills now. Excellent, I'm going to keep it there for now. Again, we're just doing very raw sounds, as you can tell by just before, all the, all the effects are going to be happening later. So let's go over to the snare, which is always the fun one. Let's put in a MIDI clip, where are we, track one. I will rename these MIDI clips eventually. Um, I don't use snares very often um, uh, for this kind of techno music, but I am going to put it on the second and fourth beat, just while we craft the snare. What I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, let's bring the transpose up. I might just delete that and solo the snare for now. So we can do snares in a few ways. Uh, let's just do a kind of a white noisy type one, but instead of uh, white noise. Let's modulate a sine wave with, with white noise. So I will pick this algorithm so we can have two different FM layers on the snare. So for this layer, again, I'm going to pick the, the looped noise, which I find good because we are able to change the uh, frequency of it. Because loop noise is basically a sample of white noise, whereas white noise is a white noise generator. And the white noise generator, you don't have this frequency control over it. So, uh, Let's do it here. David asks, why not use the follow actions four times four bar? Because uh, it's just not how I want to work in this particular set. Okay, so let's give this an envelope as well. Change it to trigger mode. Give this an envelope as well. Bring the frequency up. and bring the transpose down. Very good, I will turn this oscillator on. I am going to make this one usual white noise. I'm going to bring it up quite a lot and have a very fast envelope on it. Too loud. I'll put a little bit of a pitch envelope just on oscillator A. Mm, bit. Maybe a bit more. don't want to sound too much like a kick drum. I'm 
Let's give the filter some envelope. Your resonance down. So this is going to be a very digital sounding snare. I'm going to try and make a clap in the next snare, which would be fun. Okay, let's listen to that with everything else. Okay, so what I might do is over in the filter section, I'm going to use the SMP, I'll use the MS2 mode, give it some drive. Make it a bit angry. And let's turn on the EQ. So we can get rid of the low end. I'll add one more pole. And we'll bring five up. Laser gun. David asks, is operator sound better than Max for Live electronics kits? Uh, I'm not sure what the Max for Live electronics kits is. Probably not, but I want to do everything in operator. It's kind of a learning curve for me as well. I might go back into the operator here and give things more of a tail. So let's Maybe we'll change this to loop noise as well. I'll put it in fixed mode. Bring the transpose up a little bit. Go back into the envelope, bring it down a bit. Now let's have a listen to those together. Sounding all right. I do love my operators. Okay, we might shave that snare a little bit more, but let's get into the hats. Uh, we're going to do an open hat here. Uh, how should we do this open hat? What I might do with this one is we're going to be using hats 1-1. One, one. Get the clip playing. We're just going to have this on the offbeat, <clears throat> like so. Where's that reverb coming from? Okay, this nun clip should have the reverb dry wet set to zero. Sorry, that was my bad. Okay, let's solo this. Uh, I might make this quite metallic. So what I'm going to do is change it to complete subtractive mode. Um, We'll do the old detuned square wave. So I'm actually going to have a square wave. I'm going to make it a trigger mode. Bring the envelope down. That sounds good. Can I copy that to all oscillators? I can. Very good. Uh, I'm going to go fixed mode. Now I'm going to copy that to all oscillators. I'm detuning them all slightly.
It's not sounding exactly how I want at the moment. It would be nice to have some noise. Maybe I'll change this last one into some noise. And we'll give it a, a little bit of a tack on the envelope. Let's make these higher. I might make the... Just experimenting around with the frequencies of each of these saw waves. Kind of sounds like a chord now. I want them like quite detuned from each other. Let's make them all quite high, see if that makes a difference. Uh, we'll bring the filter down. And of course give it some envelope. Let's bring the peak down a bit. A little bit of attack, no resonance, change it to SMP mode. I think all these frequencies are going to sound better higher. We'll change the decay the filter. And then we'll change the envelopes of these a little bit. What I'm going to do is copy this from Oscar again, so they're all the same. And I'm just going to detune them really slightly. Hmm, more of an envelope. Yeah, FM is definitely good for metallic sounds. I'm quite happy with that. I don't I'd like to try and use just one operator to get the effect that I want. Now maybe I think they're a bit too high. Let's actually, uh, again, copy from OSC A, copy from OSC A, so they're all the same. Hi-hats aren't my forte. I'm just going to detune these very slightly. It's a little bit better. It's pretty harsh. Let's try the loop noise. And let's get the EQ going on over here. So obviously get rid of any low end.
cats still have a little bit too much body. So let's go back to our EQ over here. But if we're EQing it up that high, then we should really bring the frequency up. We'll use the transpose instead, see what happens. It is going to affect the white noise loops, but we'll see. Could sound good. Oh no, because I've got these on fix, the transpose isn't going to do shit, so... Yeah, let's go up really high. So we'll copy this from oscillator A, copy this from oscillator A. Copy from oscillator A. I think the Rollins use like six square waves, but we don't have that. Okay, that's too high. You can tell I'm experimenting around here. Sounds a bit better. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, we can muck around with the algorithm, see if we get a better thing. I think sub subtractive is our friend here. I'm quite happy with that. We can adjust the time if we want it shorter. Bring the levels down a little bit of these guys. Maybe let's try let's try this algorithm. Actually, no, I want D to be coming out by itself. Uh, so I need to change this one to noise. Change this one to a sign. Accidentally added a harmonic there. Yeah, that sounds more like what I want. kind of got that little tang to it we can have it nice and short can we attach the velocity to the time oh we can now that's awesome okay so we'll give that a hundred hundred percent i imagine we need to keep the time in the middle so let's go back to our midi clip here i'm going to select them all and bring this right down so we could have one Long, then one short, then one long, then one short. So that's a nice basic one. Let's copy this MIDI clip down. Um, what I'm going to do is we'll make this four bars long, make our grid size small, duplicate that across four times, make our grid size small again. I mean, we do have another hats track. Let's add some short notes in. And what I'm going to do... Well, that's kind of cool, actually. But the velocity is a little bit too much. I like that. 
So at the end of the phrase, let's even be crazy and have two quick ones. Ticker dit. And then make the grid size bigger. See, this is fun. This is this is good. I like the sound design side of things. I'm going to select these notes. I'm going to hold down the control key. I think it's the same on the Mac, our PC. Go like that so the velocity goes up to that one. And we'll make this one a nice long one. And we'll just bring this one down. Okay, it's a little bit too much. Uh, would I, oh, maybe not. If we just bring the velocity of all these down quite a lot. Maybe that'll be good because that cuts the time of all the envelopes. I can get rid of this one maybe. Maybe make this one a long one and this one a short one. I think I like that. Okay, let's listen to it all together. Very good, I'm gonna move across now. Let's go ahead and add a MIDI clip here in Hi-Hats 2. Of course, we're working in Hi-Hats uh, 1 here. So I'm gonna, just gonna make it a very basic 16 bar pattern at the moment. Get rid of the last one you reckon? I would like to have a nice long one so I'll make the velocity of this one quite big. Let's just play it from here. Sounds good. Okay, back to the hi-hats too. I'm just going to be using white noise for this one. We'll keep it very simple. We'll just put it on a white noise. Very low envelope. Make it trigger mode. Oh, I'm screwing with the wrong one. We need to be on this one here. Sorry. So, white noise. Envelope down. What if we chose white noise looped? Put it in fixed mode. Uh, copy this from operator A on fixed mode. Let's draw in our MIDI pattern first. So I'm going to do a whole bunch of 16th notes here. And what I'll do is we'll use a yeah. What we'll do is we'll attach the velocity to the filter frequency. Give it amount of a hundred. So we need to put the filter frequency in the middle, around here. So I'm just going to pick these and go up like this for a start. Let's try it on a high pass filter instead. Okay, so now we've got these uh, two white noise loops. Maybe let's change the frequency of one of these slightly. Maybe give the envelope of this a little bit longer. Or shorter. I 
Nah, maybe we'll just keep it on a normal white noise generator. It's probably for the best. That means we don't need two. That's cool. So I'm going to select all the notes and bring all the velocities up quite high. Let's bring them all up to the maximum level. And then we can change them individually. We can also drag the notes out a little bit. And let's add one more here. I like these really quick 30 second note fills. Maybe one more. Let's uh, raise the volume a little bit. I don't think we need the EQ8 for this one. A little side chain on the... Well, the hats should be side chained by default to the kick, so let me just scroll across to the side chain channel, we'll make it a bit more drastic. I don't really want to use side chaining, so, I mean... What we can also do is attach the uh, velocity to the volume as well. We'll give that 100%. I like them very static for this track. We're not looking for a nice human feeling sound here. I'm, I really want this to be quite experimental. Uh, we'll give it some widening, we'll just spread it. So they're coming from the sides. I'm quite happy with that. And of course we've got our hats two fills, which is on the five. And we're back. Okay, let's bring in the snare again. Okay, now I think I need to adjust this hat one a little bit different. Yeah, it's sounding cool already. We haven't even touched the cool automated machine yet. So once I've filled this up, I've done the percussion, the synth one and synth two, we'll be good. Are these, uh, is this square even necessary anymore? Let's 
bring it lower. I'll tell you what, let's put the LFO on. We'll put it only on oscillator A and we'll make it ridiculously fast. Uh, no re-trigger. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Make it a saw down. Very slight differences. I kind of like that. For a hi hat, I know it's not a traditional hi hat. I kind of like that though. Awesome. Let's move over to the percussion. So for this one, I want it to be kind of a. I put bongo as maybe as an example, but I just kind of want something kind of like do 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 you know something like that, something something which is percussive. So uh, I'm just going to use C here. We'll solo the track, we'll play it, and let's just add in some 16th notes. I'm just going to put in all 16th notes for now. And let's just attach, first off the bat, let's hide the chain because we don't need it. Let's just attach the volume to the velocity just for the very start. I can hear a bit of reverb as well, so we're kind of learning that these dummy clips are not doing their job properly. So where's the none? Reverb, wet, yeah, that needs to be down at zero for the none one. Very good. And I'm going to be using FM for this, but I'm not going to use uh, fixed mode. We're going to be using ratios. Still pretty cool just with the sine wave to start with. Very cool. Okay. Back here. Because it is pitched, so let's give it a B oscillator. We'll bring it up. We're in FM mode. I'm going to make this envelope shorter. Let's bring the envelope down a bit here. And we'll make a trigger mode. Let's add another FM. We'll also attach the velocity to the cutoff. We'll just go for the filter freak straight away. Bit of resonance maybe? Nah, too much. That's kind of the sound I was hoping for. I might add the de-oscillator, but make this one fixed. Just to give it a real snap. Now let's try these.
bring in the kick. Okay, so we need to boost the volume a bit. Quite like that. That's going to be a lot of fun to play with and all the effect shit. Let's bring in the snare, so the bass line. Hats are a bit loud. Sometimes it's just a matter of volume. Let's do some triggering now. I'm going to change the overall transpose of this percussion so it's tuned. We're just going to have to use our ears. It sounds tuned. Maybe it was better up an octave. All right, let's jump ahead. Let's jump ahead. We will refine these a bit, uh, a bit more. So for synth one, what do I have in my spreadsheet here? Might as well have a look. Uh, so it's a single. Oh, we want a poly nope, poly loop, but not every sixteenth note. So we're gonna do something a bit weird here. So synth one here, this is our synthesizer we're going to be working with. Again, we'll just start with a very simple operator, simple sine wave. Um, what I'm going to do is we'll make this the length of the bar. Let's make the length of the bar. What do we need? Two. So this is going to be kind of polyrhythmic. It'll just keep going. So it's actually two and a half bars long, this loop. And what I'll do is I'll bring all those up an octave. Not bad for now. What I might do is I might modulate this with a frequency modulator with a, uh, we'll try an 8-bit sign. Very good, and we'll have the filter come down with an envelope. Okay, that's cool. What I'm going to do is go into the this mode again. So we have two frequency modulated things. I'm going to copy this one from A. I'm going to copy this one from B. So we have exactly the same thing, which is very loud. Sorry. Well, all the collision and corpus happens in the later stuff. That's all the stuff we've done later. So this is raw sounds. We just want raw sounds for now. And then we can have a lot of fun once we've got all eight of these sorted. Now the reason I've duplicated that is what I might do is go into the envelope of this one here and I'm actually going to use the attack as a delay. So let's bring that right back. Maybe a little bit of fine tuning. Change the course value to, to half, of, half of what it should be. Try the course value as two instead. It's kind of cool. 
I'll bring the volume down so I can bring the filter drive up. Pretty simple sound, but of course, if we use these guys, see how that sounds with everything else. Let's bring the level back up. Sorry, that was really loud. Um, let's bring the actual volume down. We'll hide the chain here. Okay, I like that, but I want to have a chord in synth too, and by adding this and going kind of chromatically, it's not really melodic, so um, maybe if we just go, we'll go up to the D, to the C, and let's go down to the F here. Maybe instead of that, that could be an F to a G. Now we're not using any effects here guys. Remember we've done that all before. We're talking about raw sounds, just synthesizers. Maybe make this one longer and this one longer and this one longer for a bit of vari variation. Turn an octave down. Kind of clashes with the bass. Let's try four bit sine waves instead. Still not heavy with that. Let's make this even shorter so it's a very quick one. We'll add another little note here. What if we go like this? Duplicate and we'll go down an octave. Okay, I'm going to keep that as it is for now and let's work on synth 2. So I just want to have a single stab chord here. I'm going to use a sine wave. Uh, so we're on synth 2, synth 2, very good. So let's solo it. Donk. Donk. Let me just put the kick drum in. Donk. So we'll chuck it in here. We'll use G3, it might be an octave too high. Where are we here? What have I done? I changed the start position by accident. We'll 
make this an octave lower. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and or hide the chain selector. Let's go ahead and just make this a simple saw wave for now. Bring the frequency down and give it lots of envelope. Very simple. I don't want that to happen all the time, so let's make the length of the bar 2. Let's change the filter type. Uh, SMP. Rebellion reckons just the first one long. So like this maybe. Yeah, quite like that. Of course we can add some reverb. It's okay, Rebellion, man. Any any suggestions are more than welcome. Like, happy for this to be a team effort. I like reading what you guys have to say about everything. What I might do with the synth one, it's, uh, it is a little bit annoying. So what I might do is bring the course value down of this one. Down an octave. Maybe a band pass. That means we need to change. A velocity is not attached to anything. No. Let's try a triangle instead of sine waves. Kind of got that harshness to it now. Synth 2. Some spread. Let's go into the frequency, bring the volume down, give it a bit of drive on the filter. Maybe make it a uh, soft shaper. And solo it. make the filter decay time longer.
We'll give it quite a bit of release. And we also need to give the filter some release as well in. Bring the sustain up a little bit, give it release. Obviously way too much release there. Maybe give it a slight bit of FM. We'll go course value 2, we'll just use sine wave and make the envelope here extremely fast. Maybe give it some attack even. Nope. Stop this one for a sec. That's the right key for the percussion. Not sure if I'm happy with these notes. Let's make it this long. That'll sound good when we get into the automator. So that's synth one. So we can give it some reverb wet. Just putting random random shit. Yeah. Back to the automator. I'm just going to clear the automator for now. I'm going to key map uh, button number. We'll do exclamation point to the automator just so I can quickly jump to that track when I need to. So like that. Here. One. Shift one. So I'm just going to clear that. All those automation points that we did before. Now 
Nathan asks, are you going to be able to draw curves in the automator on your touchscreen when you play live? Yes, that is the entire point of the set. Um, so I can use this automator on the kick, bass, snare, hats, percussion, synth 1 and synth 2 and really evolve the raw sounds. That's why we're doing really raw sounds over here. We're just using synths and we're just using EQs um, because all the effects are going to be happening over on the automator channel. Um, so now I've kind of got this populated with some stuff. Um, I'm going to take a very quick break, bathroom break. I'll be back in about two minutes, and when we come back, I'll open up the automator, and we'll see what it can actually do with some of this content. So don't go anywhere, guys. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we are back. I should mention as well, I've got my uh, security cameras also in the, in the uh, stream because I've got lots of packages turning up today. So if you guys see a postman or a delivery person come up to my door and I'm not looking, can you tell me? Because I really don't want to miss these packages that are supposed to be arriving today. So yeah, as I was saying, now that we have a kind of a full loop, I probably will tweak this a bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the automator and I'm just going to play with it because I'm going to play with it fully like I haven't played with it before. I'm not going to say anything for the next two or three minutes while I play with it. Um, I'll use the mouse so you can actually see what I'm affecting, but in the actual live set I'll be using the touch screen on my computer, but I will use the mouse for this one just so you can um, get an idea of how it works. So I'm going to turn this up and not say anything for a bit. Thank you. 
And let's clear everything. So that was my first real play with something of some good quality substance there. And I can tell with practice, which is going to be Friday and Saturday, that uh, this is going to be pretty cool, I think. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Any chance I'll release the Automator Max for Live plugin? We'll see. Who knows? You're probably the 50th person to ask me. Probably. That snare needs a bit of work. I think it needs to be lower. It needs a bit more of a punch. Let's bring the cue down to that. A bit more of a pitch envelope. Oh, post person. Hang on. That was lucky. Just managed to make it. Neandra, how are, how are you going to build the rest of track one? Uh, I'm going to add a few variations of the MIDI clips here. Um, just a few variations. I'm going to try and do as much as I possibly can in a live situation. Now let me get this all angled properly again. I'm not going to do a live unboxing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy with this uh, with this snare currently. But yeah, sorry, Neandra, to f finish what I was saying, like, um, 
I really want to do a lot of it live, so I just want to get the foundations for the track sorted today and then um, spend a lot of time practicing live using the automated machine and all the dummy clips. It's a bit better. Let's bring the volume down, give it some more drive. Just don't want it to be peaking. You can see the fundamental here trying to sneak through. I don't want that. Maybe I should... No, that was good how it was. change this to real noise. I'm going to keep it on loop because we're frequency modulating. Let's change this one to real noise. It's got a bit more of a hit to it. Maybe even if we make the envelope of the first oscillator no release. I think I've got too much drive on the filter now. Maybe it does sound good with a little bit of the fundamental coming through there. Sounding good, but it's peaking. I'm imagining it's because of this. Let's bring the volume down of the EQ, the gain down. Yeah, definitely know I'm redlining. I think the kick just might be too loud in the mix. I mean, look at that EQ. So let's bring that down a bit. That's a bit more realistic. Let's just focus on that percussion on the automator. One thing I've noticed is uh, we've got a bit of a problem with our line now. 
So what I'm actually going to do here is stop this and save this and very quickly do a Max for Live thing. I'm not going to get into Max for Live because we've done all that already. But obviously the cursor is fucked. So let's unfreeze the device. Open up the automator, which is here. Uh, unlock it. Open up the original auto function. And um, what I originally have is I have a slider, which is doing a root pass of all these. But this is this is all going to get fucked up because I've changed the BPM from 120 to 130, which is not divisible by 60, and the 60 whatever's in the minute. So um, let's go. Let's let's get rid of this all together, and let's use the uh, cursor attribute. Um, which Sonodrome kindly told me about. So if I go into my attributes, there is actually a cursor here. Uh, I'm going to have to play with this a little bit and see how it works. Okay, so it goes all the way up to 124. So all we have to do is connect, connect this inlet to the cursor. And that should give us a accurate cursor. So let's hope for the best. I'm going to save that. Close that down, close that down, freeze that, save that. Yeah, I think using the cursor attribute for the actual function is probably going to be the best thing. Um, we need to make sure we're in presentation mode and save it. Because as we learned yesterday, if we're not in presentation mode, when we save it, it opens all the B patches for us, which is rather annoying. So let's close that down now. I think that's done. Ah, oh, no. I did it wrong. Fuck me. Okay. So we're going to have to close all these manually. Give me a second, guys. I don't know what I did wrong there, but I did something wrong. It's a real pain in the ass. See how it opens all of these sub patches for us, which is not what we want. Anyway, let's have a look now. So now we have a cursor moving in time, which is good. So let's go back over to the percussion track. Frequency shifter. Make it go up instead. Heaps better. Happy with us. I 
Still not happy with that sound. Let's start from scratch. I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to copy this operator back over to synth1. We've used a square wave in the bass. We've used a saw wave in the synth2. Let's use another saw wave. We'll just make this real simple. not be evil enough maybe that's the problem I'm gonna take all these down an octave for a start let's just make them all G for now Give it an LFO on the oscillator A. We'll make it really fast, but very small amount. Sounding a bit better. Let's get a sine wave going. Frequency modulate it at 0.5. I like the polyrhythmic loop, I really want to keep that. Ah, oh, there we go. That's the sweet spot. So that time, again, is quite a valuable parameter. I really like the time, it changes all the envelopes time. So what I'll do is I'll change the velocity to the time, give it 100%. And let's just bring these all down to what we kind of had before. I'll make the first one long. I'll make this one short. Maybe not so long. Now let's go over to the automator and play. Go clear, open. I was playing with the wrong one, my bad.
Catch you later, Neandra. Let's play with that riser really quick. gonna be fun. I can already tell how fun this is gonna be. Alright, we're good. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Um, what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna move on to track number two now, just because I've been working on this for two hours, and I think it's a good move to move on to a whole new sound. Even though I will revisit track one and come up with some different alternatives around here and do some weird stuff. What's up, Robberstar over on Twitch? Robiesta! Thank you, Loose331. What's up? Just everyone on YouTube. Big list of names. Um, so that's track one. Okay, I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to clear the automator now. So this is the raw sound again. And we've got our clips. Very 
Very good. But yeah, as I said, I want to move on to track number two now, just to refresh my ears, refresh your ears. Um, I might go back and forth between track and two until they're complete, because uh, I do get audio stagnation. I don't know if that's the right word for it. But you know, you listen to something for too long and it doesn't become exciting anymore. I think that sounds exciting. Where I've left it, it sounds really exciting. So I'm going to leave it as is exciting, because if I keep working on it, it's going to get less exciting. So let's leave it at its peak and move on to track number two. It's been a while since you've seen me awake. Yeah. Took me a second to figure out what you're talking about there, but I just got you. Okay, very good. So let's move on to track number two here. Let's have a look at my little shitty spreadsheet that I made. Um, we don't need to pay attention to this anymore. That was that was kind of what we wanted. We haven't done the drone yet, but we had a single chord. We had a poly loop. We had bongoish. Yeah, we kind of stuck to that pretty well. Um, so track two. This one's going to be more chordy. The kick is going to be more snappy. Okay, this one, the first track had a big sub kick. This one's going to be snappy and actually have a bass line. I want to try and make a, a more of a clap sound for the snare. Uh, the hats are going to be a bit more attacky, a bit more noisy. I want the hats too to be quite dirty, so kind of uh, clippy. We'll play around with filter drives and stuff. Um, the percussion is going to be not like bongos, like a constant pattern going. It's just going to occasionally uh, do some kind of like click noises or some kind of weird kind of squelch things. Um, synth 1, I've got low filter morph, so I'm thinking like big kind of wow. And then synth 2 is going to be multi chords, and by that I'm, I mean like dun 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 dun, you know, kind of that kind of chordy sound. <clears throat> um, and then. I've got here changes drop, so I kind of like it at some stage to have a different version of the loop I create, which is the next level. So when we do actually do a breakdown manually, we'll drop into the one with the changes, uh, the change of it. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. Um, hope you're all doing good. If you're just tuning in, we're doing sound design. We're making raw synth sounds. Um, all the effects and stuff come afterwards so we're just doing the raw stuff so let's go to track two here let's throw in a midi clip like so i'm going to save my set it's probably the best option right now how are we how are we doing for cpu as well let's just play pretty good that's a pretty safe level so i'm going to stop all the clips and let's go down here and let's start again with kick and this time we're doing kick number two Remember we want this one to be a lot snappier. Now I'm going to continue, I'm going to make the kick similar to how I um, did before. But we need to go into kick 2 here. So remember, well, maybe if we just copy across kick 1, it'll be faster if we just modify this so it's snappier. I need to rename this to kick 2. Rather than recreate it from scratch, we might as well do it this way. Because it already is a pretty fat kick, it just has that big sub ending to it. So let's just bring the time down. That's pretty much it. A bit more. I'm going to change the fine tuning of the uh, second set of FM here. Sounding pretty good. Bring the level up a little bit of the uh, frequency modulation. Let's maybe not make them in fixed mode. Just got to find that sweet spot. And I'm going to bring the transpose up a little bit. Let's change the pitch envelope a little bit. We'll make the decay a little bit shorter. It's better when it's lower. That is definitely better. I'm 
Let's bring the time down even shorter. How about there? That sounds pretty good. Let's go over to our EQ here. So you can see some interesting harmonics happening here. So let's raise those and see what happens. Get rid of this five. What I might do is uh, maybe give it more pitch envelope even. That's too much. Not bad. It's not doing anything, is it? Change the course value. Yeah, that's a standard kick drum. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I wanted, what did I say in that spreadsheet? I wanted it to be a kind of an offbeat bass line. So we'll just go into the bass, hit play, and we are going to be working in chain selector number two here. So I'm going to move it across, go to bass number two, and I'm just going to throw in a low G1 on the offbeats. We'll make it a G0. We can make the notes longer. Or we could keep them as they are, but give them some release instead. That's probably a better idea. Let's hide the chain selector. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Hope that's a good volume for you guys. So um, I'm going to make the voices to one because it's the bass line. And let's give it some release, just a little bit. Let's even bring the sustain down just a little bit. Bring the decay a bit shorter and bring the volume up a little bit. And what I might actually do here is, yeah, go into subtractive mode and we'll turn on B and C, but we'll make B the second harmonic, C the third harmonic. And just bring them up a little bit. If we make this the fourth, it's going to be an octave. Maybe play with the envelope a little bit there. Just so we get that little click and a little bit of pitch envelope. Doesn't really sound like techno at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this clip down. What I'll do is put in a whole bunch of 16th notes for fun. Yeah, it's far too intense, but we'll keep it there anyway. Let's roll with that for now. Sounding good. Uh, let's go ahead and make a snare. So I want to try and make a clap for this one. So this is going to be interesting. So we're now dealing with snare number two, which is this one here. Hmm. So for snare two, I'm going to go into full subtractive mode. I'm going to go white noise. Bring the envelope down. But if I want to clap, I want to have multiple instances. So I'm going to copy this to all the oscillators. Very good. And I'm actually going to use the attack as a pre-delay.
And this one again, even more pre delay. We'll muck around with these and fine tune them soon. These will need to be on trigger mode. I'm going to solo this. So you can hear by using the attack here as a pre-delay, we kind of it kind of sounds like a bunch of people clapping. Well, no, it doesn't, but you can see we get individual hits, um, and I'll do it one more time for the fourth one. Seems to be in trigger mode too. Too much delay. My are trying to recreate a clap. I think they're all a little bit too long. Okay, let's open up the EQ8 here. Get rid of all the low end. And we'll make this a shelf as well. Let's play with the filter frequency a bit. Give it some envelope. Maybe give it some attack. Give it a little bit of drive. We'll change it to SMP mode. Bit of resonance. Whoops. Kind of sounds like a clap. Maybe if we make the release time a little bit longer on this. I think what we need to do is uh, actually bring these back slightly. So I'm going to turn the grid off and very slightly move these back. It's a bit too much. Very good, and of course we can
I'm pretty happy with that for a raw snare sound for now. It kind of sounds good with that. Quite a high Q. It's finding the sweet spot. If we bring the Q right up, we could actually make it tonal. So that's a G or something relative to the G. You can hear the tone is good, so now we can bring the Q down. But too much still. You reckon spread on the claps? I mean, it does make it sound instantly better, of course. Yeah, sure, why not? So that'll, that'll do for the claps. Uh, what did I have for the hi-hats on this one? I want them to be attack noise with a bit of grit. Okay. So let's go ahead and make some more hat. hi-hats again on the offbeats. We're working with hat two. Uh, where is hat 2? It's here. Let's just use normal noise. Let's give it a little bit of an, at an attack. We'll just put a high pass filter on it. Maybe a band pass. No, high pass. We'll make it an SMP so we can lower the volume and we will change the shaper to a 4-bit and bring the drive up. Make it a low pass. Maybe not a 4-bit, maybe a hard. Turn on the EQ. I like that clap. Good suggestion with the spread. Now, do I want these to ring? I think I just want this to be nice and gritty. Let's try the uh, loop noise instead. That's real simple. No. Let's just shorten the claps in the actual MIDI clip. Mm, we've got more oscillators to play with. We might as well add a little bit of ring to it, so let's go this mode here so that we have a, FM, a bunch of FM to play with. I'll keep these all sine waves, turn them on, bring them up, let's solo this. I might as well trans transpose it.
bring the envelope uh, decay all the way up. Sorry, the release. Uh, sustain. And we'll give this one a bit of release. Maybe make the last modulator a noise. Put them in the fix mode. What's up, Diego? You're the man. Just back to these. Okay. Yeah! Now I can play the EQ a little bit more. I'm gonna make two and three really sharp poles. It's using my ears again, and now I can bring the Q down. And the frequency down. Whoa, not the frequency. The gain down. What do you reckon? This is pretty cool. What's up, Malcolm, on Facebook? Okay. What do we have for hats, too? Let's look at our spreadsheet. Uh, track two, hats. Two, dirty, steady velocity, long with fills. So, steady velocity, I mean very computerized sounding. So, let's go over to hat two here. Uh, we'll start with a one bar loop. We'll solo it. Obviously, it's going to be a sine wave to start with. So, let's just go. Okay, we'll change that to noise. I'm gonna turn the t turn it down a little bit here. Make sure we're on hats too. Bring the envelope down. Alright, that's kind of what I want. Uh, let's change the filter to SMP again. And we'll give it just a little bit of envelope. Bring it down. Bring the decay shorter on the envelope. A bit more. And yeah, we'll use the drive. What if we use a sign? No, we'll keep it on hard. We need to bring the volume down. We will we'll need to use the EQ8, of course, because we're covering the spectrum. 
so we'll cut off a lot of it apart from the highs like that and now So the time is a lot of fun to play with, so we will attach the velocity to the time, give it 100%. And now we can go in here and change these all around. So let's select them all for a start and bring the velocity down. And I wanted this to be a really long loop, so I'm actually going to make this 16 bars long. No. What we'll do, we'll do it this way. We'll go 2 bars long. We'll duplicate that across, and then let's do some variation with the velocity first. I'll bring the kick in just so we've got it to play with. I'm going to double up a lot of these. Let's select these and have the velocity come up like so. It's almost like a typewriter. Make this one long. We need one more. Yeah, we'll make that one long as well. Maybe this one. How's that sound with this one? All good. I'm just going to bring the gain up a little bit of this. Sounding good. Okay, so now that we have a two bar loop, let's make it a four bar loop and we'll duplicate everything like so. I just saved my project by accident, but that's okay. So we'll do a little bit more variation here. Um, I think it'd be cool to have double ups here like so. And of course, we'll need to select those, just select the velocity. That is the Windows key. That is the Windows key. Bring that up. Diego, how can I do this velocity curve as you did in the hi-hat? From weak to strong notes. Uh, I have the velocity set to the time, which is this knob here. And the time knob adjusts the envelope uh, parameters all at once for every envelope. The filters, well, maybe it's just the oscillators. But at this time knob adjusts the uh, envelopes. So by, have, by having the velocity attached to that time, we can do, we can have that kind of opening up quite a lot. Let's just bring this down a bit. I'll change four into a very sharp shelf. Oh, sorry, the velocity curve. Um, on the PC, it's the control key. I'm pretty sure it's the command key on the uh, Mac as well. Um, it's definitely the control key on the PC. So, where are we here? Let's just start from bar 3. Let's bring the velocity up here as well. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of these notes, like this. See how that sounds. We'll just add another, another double there. And 
And we'll make these ones doubles as well. I keep hitting the Windows key by accident. It's usually where my alt key is. Whoa, no. It's the first time that's happened. I'm going to keep this going until it crashes. If it doesn't crash, I'm going to force quit it and see what happens. Because this is part of it. This is part of it. We get crashes. This is the first crash I've had, which I'm not too happy about. But it doesn't stress me out too much. I can still move things in Ableton, so I believe it's an audio card crash. So what I'm going to do is go into my preferences. Let's look at our hardware. I'm going to diagnostics. We've got all these buffer underruns happening. So let me just turn off my audio. Turn it back on. And hope for the best. And we're back. No need to panic. Okay, no need to panic. It happens, it happens. It's part of the job, it's part of the industry. If I had a thousand people watching me, I would have been a little more stressed, but... Rather than quickly go, ah, oh, and turn the stream off, I think it's important to figure out where that came from. So, we've had a couple of buffer underruns using the sound card. Uh, so when I uh, stop the stream, I'm going to be doing some stress testing. Um, I might not use the sound card if this keeps happening. Um, I'll find an alternative. <clears throat> but yeah, I can't have that happening on the night on Saturday. I know, I was like, is it going to crash? Is it not going to crash? And I was like, hey, I can move stuff in Ableton. So, yeah, the sound card just freaked out. Maybe it wasn't getting enough power, because I am running a USB 3.0 hub, which is unpowered currently. So, uh, what I might do is go out and buy myself a powered USB 3.0 hub. Um, the push had, has its own dedicated port there, and then this has a 4-port USB 3.0 hub, which is running 1, 2... These two, the sound card, and currently a mouse. So that could be the issue. It could just be the um, audio card plugged into a hub. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I will save the set while we're not freaking out. So I'm going to select these guys here and do that little curve thing again. So that can lead up. Actually, let's make the whole of this like this. Do we want it to go one, two, three, four, or do we want it to slowly rise? Let's listen and see what sounds best. Probably all rise from nothing. So hold down control and draw it up to here. Let's play it from here. That's cool. I'm going to even go deeper than that and go all the way from the bottom if I can. Maybe if we start here and go down like that. Malcolm on Facebook asks, the Ableton Push recommended for new users or suggest they learn the hard controls via keyboard and mouse? It's a tricky question. I would say if you're from a traditional musical background and you actually play an instrument, whether it be guitar or piano or whatever, um, a push is a really good option because I said this on my last stream, but the push to me is more of an instrument than it is a MIDI controller. These are MIDI controllers, these or controllers. This is quite a masterpiece. Like it's something you have to learn and practice and have that kind of mindset that you can't just plug it in. Well, you can just plug it in and jam straight away if you have a good Ableton template to work with. But, you know, it takes a while to get used to it. And then when you do get used to it, uh, it is a dream. So it's not like I'm going to plug this in and then this is my cutoff filter. Wow, 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 wow. I mean, you can still go there and go, this is my cutoff, wow, wow, wow. But you've got all of these cool drum things to play with, your sequences. Uh, your scales, your modes, all that kind of thing. There's a lot of modifier buttons all around here, and you've got to kind of 
in order to jam quickly, you need to know exactly where they all are um, rather than like looking at, oh, where's the delete button, where's the duplicate button, things like that. Um, I recommend it. I think it's, it's really handy for me. Like in a live situation, I, lo I love it. For example, I don't have, I've used all my MIDI configurations on these launch controls. So let's say if I wanted to change something on the reverb, which is on the send over here, if I click on this, you'll see that it's, can you see it? You see that it's updated all the reverb parameters here. So now these eight knobs are now reverb parameters. I've got my dry wet, I've got my decay time, I've got my room size, uh, or I could go over to this delay and instantly I now have control of the feedback of the delay or the time of the delay. Or I could go to the EQ and I could control each individual pole. So it's really good for that. Um, in, in live situations or jam situations because uh, it instantly you know, changes these knobs to whatever you currently have selected. So that's kind of my opinion on that. And it's just, it's so good for just jamming down ideas and stuff as well. That's my recommendation. So back to this clip here. Okay, that's all good. Let's um, solo the hats. Let's go into the actual synth, synth again. We could do something really whack here. Like we could put on the LFO. I'm not gonna put it on re-trigger. I'm gonna put it on high mode and see how fast it sounds. I need to attach it to something. That's already attached to that. And that's not gonna work because that is white noise. So let's attach it to the filter instead. So that's not really doing anything. We'll take it off the filter. What else can we attach it to? Um, time. <laughs> we could try. No, that doesn't do anything cool. I'm just experimenting here. Filter drive. Okay, let's make it slow mode or low mode. That does something to it, but it makes them less sharp. So I'll turn it off. I might keep the LFO off. Let's um, we'll pick this mode again. Let's turn on B. We'll go into fix mode. Might too, too much. Do we like it without that? Yeah, I think I'll just stick with the noise. I'm happy with that. Very good. Okay. I'm just going to have a quick two minute break, guys. Cheers for tuning in. Um, don't go anywhere. I'll be back in two minutes. Cheers.
I'm upside down. Look at that. Pretty cool. All right, we're back. So, again, back to our hats. I'm pretty happy with that selection. We are redlining in the snare. So what I'll do is I'll bring the... Bring this down a little bit. And again, we can do little fills. Very good. But now we should really add some substance. So I'm going to go ahead with the percussion track now. Um, again, I'll look at my spreadsheet. What do I have? Clickish long with fills. Okay. So we'll go to our percussion layer here. We're going to be working with percussion number two. So we need to go to our chain selector and pick number two. Very good. So now, down here, we'll add a percussion track. And I'll bring everything out apart from the kick. And turn it up a bit. Hopefully you can still hear me talking over that. going to be a lot of fun to play with live. Anyway, let's work on this percussion. So, yeah, I'm thinking of something mm, before we had kind of like bongos going. Now I think we'll just have some like maybe donk, donk, donk. We'll just start with a one bar pattern to start off with. Getting something coming through on here. Reverb wet. The delay wet is up. Okay. So we need to go into our delay wet on the dummy track, which is this one, and make sure this is down to none. So we don't get that. Yeah, okay. We're just getting a little bit of delay. So I want this one to be a little bit more clicky. I feel like I'm getting something else other than a a pure sine wave at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this track again. That's the auto track. Something's not right here. Delay wet down, reverb wet. The grain wet isn't down either. Okay, so we need to go grain wet and bring that down as well. There we go. So we're finding all these little problem areas, which is good. Okay, so we want it to be clicky. We'll hide the chain. Uh, let's have a, just a sine wave. Again, modulate it with white noise looped in a fixed position. Give it an envelope. Make this nice and short. And what we'll do is we'll change the phasing to get a bit of a click on it. Not too exciting at the moment. We'll go into this mode here. So we've got two. I'll make this uh, oscillator noise looped as well. Give that an envelope also.
Actually, no, I'll make this one a sine wave. And I'll frequency modulate it with another sine wave. Okay, that's cool. What we'll do is maybe if we assign the LFO to the, the level of oscillator D, that could be cool. So we need to go destination OSC D volume and turn that on, make sure re-trigger is off. We'll put it in sync mode. And we'll make it go over four bars. Changes it slightly. Let's give this envelope a bit of a bit more decay. A little bit metallic, it's kind of cool. Obviously if we play with the time a bit, we can get those. It doesn't sound very good. So what I might do, give it some resonance. Too much. Change it to SMP mode. Bring this up. Maybe 20% resonance or so. I think my mouse is a bit buggy. It does weird things. What I'll go ahead and do is give it some drive, bring the volume down, we won't use a shaper, and I'll attach the velocity to the cutoff filter frequency. So let's make this now a four bar loop. We'll duplicate this four times. We'll just bring the velocity down, up, down, maybe here, here, and here. For some reason, all these are out of time. I made an error there. Okay, that's kind of sounding how I want. Let's bring in these a little bit. Okay. Back just to the, back just to the sound. We are redlining a little bit. Let's bring the volume down a bit. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if this is the mouse. Let me try the touchpad and see if it does that. Oh, it's definitely the mouse. 
I'll keep using it anyway. So I want to have quite a lot of variation in this clip. So I'm going to make it uh, 16 bars long. Let's make our grid size smaller. And I'm going to duplicate that across four times. Make the grid size smaller. Let's go in and just do a few little variations here. Just going to add some extra notes in. And because this is melodic, we can actually go... Let's bring this down an octave, see what happens. Okay, so this has almost become a synth line now. Let's go up an octave for that one. Kind of like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, so I'm just going to delete all this, which I did before. Make the grid size smaller again, and we'll duplicate this. Hopefully, it's all in time. Grid size smaller again. Let's add in some really fast notes here. Take the grid, set off, grid size off. Tick it, tick it. Make them really fast. Like so. And use the control trick. We'll make them shorter like this. Dunk a dunk. Excuse me, singing to myself. Down an octave. Make this velocity lower. Make this one higher. Let's give it a bit of reverb just to make it a bit more exciting. Let's even put one note here. Bring it right down. We could even risk it. That's not a G, that's a G sharp. We could even risk it and put one more. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. See how that sounds. Shift and down, excuse me, to answer your question, Malcolm. If you push shift and down, it goes down, down an octave.
That hat needs to be tuned a bit better now. Very cool. Okay, let's just keep the kick in now. Move over to the synth. What do we have for the synth? Synth 1 low filter morphs. Okay, we can do that. So I'm going to throw a track in here. Hang on, let me look at that spreadsheet again. Slow LFO to FM. Okay, I think what I mean by that is I want to make this, we'll make this an 8 bar clip to start with. And I'm just going to start off with a very low note. So we'll go with a G1, uh, G1. <laughs> cool man, I haven't grown up either so don't worry. Thanks for the kind words though Diego. What's up Cebic? So let's play this. Yeah! We need to move across to synth number two in our chain selector, which will just be a sine wave for now. Pretty boring right now. But I want to FM that. What I'm going to do is frequency modulate it with a 4 bit sine at 50% of the initial fundamental. So that's what I was talking about. So what we'll do is we'll put the LFO on, turn it off everything else apart from the oscillator B volume without re-trigger and we'll make it slow. Could even bring this down an octave if we want to make it m m grungier. Too much. Okay, so the problem we have is that's obviously playing some very low frequencies, but I want to play with the cutoff filter as well, so I'm going to use the EQ here to get rid of the low frequencies. I think you out the synth in G, whereas the percussion, you reckon the percussion is in G sharp? G. That's a G. That's a G. It sounds right to me. It sounds in tune to me. All good, all good. Worth checking, worth checking. If you guys think something's wrong, do let me know. It's worth checking, I don't mind. Uh, let's go to synth one again. So I'm just gonna bring everything down but the kick in synth one, which is this one. 
So with the EQ, we will do a shelf. That's obviously the fundamental. So about there is good. So that shouldn't interfere with the baseline. Let's bring it in. I'm going to change the LFO rate to sync and four bars, one bar maybe. No, two bars. We'll go four. I might bring the level up a bit here. Let's assign the LFO to the filter as well, see what happens. Not bad, perhaps what we could do though, is instead of using the LFO to change... Oh, we'll keep the LFO on the volume B, but we won't use it to change the filter. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and add some notes in here. For a start, I'm just going to add them at the start of each bar. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like this. And what I'll do is I'll use the envelope of the filter, but we'll use it quite dramatically to open it up. Let's give it some more frequency modulation here. Okay, I'm just going to leave that for a second stop the clip because since two I want to have some nice kind of cool chords So I'm going to add those in um, instead because I think synth one and synth two are going to complement each other So I'm just going to take a break on synth one and uh, Yeah, I want it to be quite a lot of chords. So um, Yeah, we're in G minor So let's put a G minor in Make sure we go into synth two and go into our chain selector and choose synth two so it'll just be a uh, saw sine wave for now. And I'll just make it a square to start off with. Like so. 10, Mark Waller. Hey, it's all. Been watching for a while now. Nice chill stream. What's up, brother? Yep. We're having a good fun time now. We're doing the sound design. All the shell stuff is done. All the maths, all the tidy work, all the housework. So now we can just make some cool sounds. Da, da, da. Cool pattern. Let's bring in some of these. Okay. I'll keep the bass in. Da, da, da. So I want it to be da 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 let work Simple. Let's 
make it a square. It is a square. So. Let's try mixing a square and a saw. Let's hide this chain. It's annoying. We'll make the square up an octave. Let's add another oscillator. We'll keep this one a sign, but we'll make it the, th the third harmonic. And let's make, that, make this one a fifth, also a sign. Fifth is no good. It's kind of what I want. Just focus on this here. Obviously, we are peaking, so let's bring the volume down. I might have an LFO assigned to the <sighs> time. Let's see what that does. Let's turn it on. I'm going to pick sync mode, turn off re trigger. Put it on just one, one bar. And make sure we delete it from the pitch of A, B, C, and D. Let's make it four bars, two bars long. It's not really helping us much, is it? Let's go back over here. Maybe the filter envelope instead. Nice lush pad. And that, of course, will be a lot of fun to play with on the automator. So let's go to synth 2 here. We have a low pass filter. Let's make it f four bars long. And let's play with the reverb dry wet over four bars. One more. Give it a long decay time. Maybe two bars long. Let's go into eight bars for the delay wet. Bring this up. up. Just doing random shapes at the moment. 
lots of feedback. In the delay time, we'll do some weird shit. Maybe over four bars. Okay, let's add the other elements in. One by one. Can't really hear that percussion now. A little bit. It's gonna boost it a little bit. What's up, Alex? Uh, what's up, Chelsea? I don't know where Gomez is. He's somewhere else in the house. Okay, let's go back to our techno machine and clear all the automation we just did. So I'm pretty happy with those chords there. We will do some variations of it at some stage, but let's get rid of them and the hats and the percussion. And let's bring this synth one back in. I think I might change this quite melodically. Let's go. Let's do some note drawing. Uh, just loop that for a sec, so we'll make it four bars long instead. Maybe change this from a sign. Let's add our own harmonics in. And of course that'll be fun with... What I will do is I will change it to one voice only and um, I'm going to select all the clips here, control all. I'm going to drag them back 
No, I'm not. I'm going to select all the clips apart from the first one and drag them back like that. Because we've got one voice on, that means we can turn on glide. We'll change it to something quite long. Okay, it happens way too soon. So let's hold down control and just have it... I'm going to zoom in here. Just have them overlapping. Maybe make the glide a little bit longer. Not bad. Nearly there. We changed the course value of this up one. Put some drive on the filter. I'll make it an MS2. What about if we add one more layer of FM? Make it four, five. Let's assign four. We'll make this a sign for as well. I'm going to bring the amount down slightly on the LFO. So it's kind of cool with those fills. Let's try it again, because it's fun. What I feel that synth needs... Okay, let's uh... Let's bring everything down but that synth and the kick. So the LFO is currently just controlling the volume B. I'm just going to turn that off for a second. Let's see if we can control volume B with a looped envelope instead. Uh, we'll go beat synced. And up and down. Okay, I'm happy with that. Bring the level up a little bit more.
because what I want to do here is instead of have the LFO attached to that, let's use the LFO to rhythmically gate stuff. So I'm going to go oscillator volume A. I'm going to change it to a square wave and I'm going to change it to 16th notes. So I'm going to bring the amount down. Let's just see what happens when I bring it up. Bring the reverb off. And I want, I want that to happen gradually, so we do have an envelope for the LFO as well. And we will turn re-trigger on, so that should re-trigger the envelope, I believe. Maybe we need to go trigger for the envelope. We'll turn rig trigger off here. No, let's go none re trigger here. Let's make it a saw down instead, because that'll be a bit sharper. the level slightly down of OSC C. I like I like where this is going. The problem we're getting though is because these are overlapping, it's not re-triggering. So what I'm going to do is not have this one overlap. So every two bars it should reset that envelope on the LFO. Let's make the LFO have a longer time. shorter maybe bring this up to a a sharp instead I think square sounds better. And let's go play with that in our machine.
It's a bit loud, isn't it? Yeah, sorry about that. Hopefully that's better. Okay, I am pretty happy with that. Um, let's go ahead and very quickly just listen to track one again, what we did. Uh, I will need to go into each one of these and change uh, the bass chain selector to number one, the percussion chain selector to number one, the synth chain selector to number one, and the synth two chain selector to number one. Hopefully, uh, let me just clear everything. Let's play this. Very good. I'm going to stop it there because we're nearly on four hours and that's Facebook's cutoff point and I'm getting tired. I'm going to go have a break for maybe two or three hours and then I'm going to come back and start working on tracks three and four and padding out these MIDI clips. And yeah, that's pretty much how it's going to roll. We're going to get one, two, three and four sorted today. Tomorrow we're going to get five, six, seven and eight sorted. And then that leaves me Friday and Saturday to practice. Whew, cutting it thin. So cheers for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Um, if you've just tuned in, 
you can go back and rewatch this if you want to on YouTube forward slash Cosm Cosm. Have a good day, and I'll probably be streaming again in about two or three hours. Yeah, I'm very happy with how it's coming along, Gamlo. Um, it's it's working how I anticipated, which is good. If it didn't, I would have been a bit fucked. So it is actually working how I anticipated, and this is half me sound designing and half me learning how to use this whole setup with things that I've done. Obviously on Friday and Saturday when I practice, I'm just going to spend hours and hours figuring like out how to use this content in new creative ways. But for now, yeah, we're just getting getting the content content in. I'm also going to go do a little bit of research on making better snares because I don't think I'm very good at it. So anyway, <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. I'll probably see you in a few hours.